Hi everyone. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, this new library I've been working on, this new library framework called uh, FrameJS. Uh, FrameJS, I still don't know very well how to define it, but uh, I'll try by now saying that it's a real-time animations editor uh, for the web. And hopefully, at some point, it's also going to be by the web, like people are going to be contributing some effects and some um, filters and stuff like that. Um, I always talk about demo scene, but uh, I need to talk about it a bit, a bit as a background. Uh, so back in the, in the I used to be uh, a little bit active in the demo scene like 10 years ago or something like that. Um, back in the days, uh, the demo scene, they would, what they do is, is a bunch of people that they try to do some uh, real-time animations that they showcase what the uh, computer on the platform can do, like in the same way that nowadays we're doing WebGL demos and showing what WebGL can do. Back then, they were showing what like a 4x6 could do, like an Amiga could do. Uh, so this is how, um, I don't know if you can see well. This is how a code uh, used to look like on the first ones. Like, this is as simple as it gets. Uh, you will have like a, a loop that it will be running every frame. And they were checking uh, if time was less than five seconds, then it will, you will put all this chunk of code of what it will take to render like a title of the demo, for instance. And then if the, t if the time was less than 10, like if it was bigger than five and less than 10, then you will have all this code for like running, like running this cube. And then same thing for the plasma cube, or like for the plasma, or, and of course you always have to get like a girl image at some point that will go after this um, time was 20 seconds. Um, this doesn't really sound like a very uh, scalable setup. Like you had to work with other people, you had to work with a, um, like a designer or a graphician or something like that, um, like a musician. Like for editing, it will take like way too much time. Like if the guy will say like, oh, what about making this like five seconds shorter or stuff like that. So they will have to modify the whole code and then compile again. And um, I, it just wouldn't scale up very well. So at some point, uh, people started to build their own um, um, uh, editing tools. So this is one that in our team we built. Uh, well, I, I didn't really do much. Like I, I wasn't a developer back then. I was just doing graphics. Uh, so the guy on my team uh, built this one. And um, it was pretty basic. Like as you can see, you have like, some layers at the bottom. And uh, the t it was, this was pretty much the timeline. And every point was kind of to set up some effects or some codes into that. Uh, effect, and then we had this was another example of a timeline, um, like of, a, of an editor. Uh, this one has a little bit; uh, it was a little bit more um, um, advanced. Like it had this uh, curve uh, view, so it had the same. It also had like a timeline view that you had all the blocks. Like in, usually, like in um, uh, Premiere or like After Effects, you will have this um, view, but also it has this curve panel that you will be able to do to, to some curves that you will like, you have like a fade effect that you have like a, like a camera that goes like this, you will be able to modify that, apply that curve to any value from that 3D scene. And um, this one was the last one that we used. Uh, it was every, everyone, each one was done with a different guy and somehow I was w working with those guys uh, and I managed to use those tools. The good thing of this, this one was also very similar to the previous one. Like it also had a team, like timeline. I also had all this. Like this was like uh, uh, the curve view. But um, what it was amazing about this is that all those parameters that you will change, you will you will see exactly in real time immediately what it will affect, like how it look like. Uh, sadly, I cannot show the tools because they were for Windows and I don't use those OS anymore. Uh, but at least we can see uh, those screenshots. So it will be nice to be able to, to do a better demo of them, but uh, I think you can get a little bit of an idea of it. So the output of the uh, animations that we did, uh, demos as we call them, the output wasn't really amazing because all this was like uh, hobby uh, work, like no one was paying for this. We would compete uh, with, with each other and basically we will uh, we will work in a new animation or a new demo like uh, two weeks before the competition. So you only had time like, like two weeks to build something. Uh, the developer usually will, like over the year, will be like working on his free time like building these tools. Um, but the output, it was always, you always have to say like, but it was done in two weeks. So you know, don't, don't judge it that way. Like it's not like a After Effects animation. Uh, which that's kind of the reasoning of all this stuff. Like I, I saw that there was a lot of potential on this, like it was the whole real time and everything. 
uh, was amazing, and I always still, um, um, I always was very impressed with it. I, I, I miss that After Effects didn't have like things, things like that, or like any other like um, famous uh, editing tool. Like it was in real time. So as an example, I'll show like this one that we were seeing here. I again like I'm not running Windows, mm -hmm. Apps, so I had to uh, show a video of it. This demo for this one, I was doing all the modeling on 3D Studio Max. Um, we had some uh, exporters. Also, we, we will build our own exporters. So we'll, we'll export from there to our own format, and then it will load in this, in this tool, and then do all the editing and all the uh, camera movements. I don't remember whether the camera movements. Uh, I think the camera also were done in 3D Studio Max. Uh, but we'll just modify a little bit like how everything is growing and the, all the post-processing and things like this. So the thing is, like all these that we just like. Uh, the demo that we just saw, um, it's, it can easily be done like with WebGL. It's the same thing. Like it just, we just happen to be using like DirectX back then, uh, but it, that could be like easily done in WebGL. And I'm, I wish like the webs were a little bit more like like this, uh, more this kind of graphics. And uh, the problem was the problem is that um, we still need better tools to build this kind of thing. Like right now, it's, everything is it's for. Uh, developers so far, like we need more, like to be a little bit more friendly to the people doing graphics and 3D stuff. Um, so exactly one year ago, coincidentally, one year ago, uh, I was invited to .js, and I used that as an excuse to start building like a library, like start building this tool. Like I wanted to recreate the tool that I just showed, like this this previous one. I wanted to recreate this one. Uh, I wanted to have it again back. Uh, but so I, I thought, like, what about trying to build this, like, in JavaScript, and make it open and making like available for everyone, and see 
what happens when a tool like this is available for like people and people can build like their own modules or their own like effects um, anyone can create with it. Uh, a little bit like Flash was like an open source Flash in, in a way. Um, so I built like a very, uh, like I quickly built like, I think it was probably like two weeks or something else as you saw, uh, to build like a prototype of or, like a first version of it. Um, this is not exactly how it looked like, it looked a little bit worse than this, but uh, you get the idea. And So this is, this is using, uh, this was done, oh, thank you. Uh, this was done using uh, this uh, shader effect, like framing shaders that you can find on like a shader, like a shader, shader toy that come or like a GLSL sandbox. Uh, so, I, I, well, I, I give some credit here for the shaders that I, I took, but I, I had to build something very quickly. So in this case, I'm, I just built like some basic modules that you will pass any framing shader and then a time or like some properties to it and then do like a play them uh, just in the right time. So this, at this point, like, this tool was not very useful. Like it can only, you know, show the blocks and you can kind of jump to any point. But uh, for instance, like you can, oh, that's in the way. Uh, here, you can, the only thing you can do is like move the flash maybe. That this, this was just a simple module that it will just like draw a quad on top of it with some uh, opacity, and uh, at the beginning it will be one, and then at the end it will be zero. So just when you move it, you are kind of flashing the screen. And the same thing like here, you can move like when that effect is playing. And, um, but I, that's that's pretty much what I had. Like I, I was saying that uh, it will be nice if you click here, and then you have some properties to change there, and, and that's about it. But uh, or like even resize or things like that. But I, that's pretty much all what I had. So. Uh, let's see if I can answer the next one. Um, so then, eight, eight months later, there was this event in Spain, like uh, Esco, uh, Esco party, which is is the LAN party that they used to go like um, when I was young, like ten years ago. Uh, and I had I hadn't gone like for like maybe four years or five years. Um, so this year, we're like, oh, maybe I can go. Like a LAN party looks like this. If anyone is not aware of this, like there's a ton of people, a lot of a ton, a ton of computers, and in this one they do. Um, some demo scene competitions. Um, so I wanted, I, th I thought going back to this one and see if I could release something. And, uh, um, and I set myself the challenge of like just going with a Chromebook, like uh, this uh, $3 uh, Chromebook, and see what, the, what, what it could do with it. Like I, I kind of found it interesting that this device, or this machine had the same power that the, the computer that I was carrying 10 years ago with the screen on the on the um, on the big tower on the back, and now I could just carry with this, this super cheap device and see what I could do with this with this thing. So I locked myself um, in the room for like two days before the, the competition um, to see what I could do. Like I only had one song, and then I had to build out of it something with it. It was a bit challenging because this is running Chrome OS, and and whenever you're doing something with Chrome or any uh, browser you have some uh, security limitations, so you cannot load textures, or you cannot load um, some like even JSON files. So I had to, basically I had to use, like load like 3JS and use all the primitives that they had available and build something out of it. Um, so this is what I built. Uh -oh.
So as a oh oh well it goes back well as an experiment on this one I try adding like a, as if it was a video so you can forward to any point in time uh, if this allows me yeah like if it was any kind of video but the good thing the, then the nice thing of this is that even in this it happens that this resolution right now is pretty I don't I don't think I have rendered this thing at such a high resolution so in this case the good benefit of this is that if you had a video it will look a little bit blurry but this is still as crisp as the projector can be um, let's see if I can go so for this um, I just the same uh, I just the same uh, version of the tool of the editor that I have from .js basically uh, I just added a few things like now I call like zoom in the timeline uh, to kind of navigate a little bit quicker and uh, maybe I call like uh, resize the, the effects and move a little bit but uh, but that's pretty much oh actually I, I was also like able to like clone an effect so like if I had this I, can, I could have another flash there if I wanted to like just move it towards when it goes away, like whatever. And uh, here, uh, we'll, you can also remove some. And in this case, it was actually useful because whatever I was doing here, and then I call like export to this, which is basically like a, a, a kind of format that I still try to mod, um, define. It's just a JSON format uh, that then I uh, runtime uh, whenever you, you're using the editor, but then you can use a player, and then that's this what the player basically needs. And also, you also need like uh, the module, something like this. Uh, so from here, I could like edit the whole thing, like duplicate things and export it, and it started to be a little bit useful. Uh, but for instance, uh, if I want to, mo if I wanted to modify like any anything in it, like I still couldn't like change any parameters from here. So if I want here, for instance, uh, if I want to do scene scene from module, I'll have to go back to the code which this is how it used to look. Um, here, for instance, if we want to change instead of being um, the light instead of being red, I don't know what can I change. Uh, yeah. yeah. Instead of having this uh, red color, like we can just change it. I had to um, reload and kind of go back to the same place, but now you can see that the light around it is um, yellow and I guess it would be better if we change also the sphere like this one so now instead of having this red um, thing in the middle like we have it in, in yellow and everything just looks like as it used to be um, but you know still like this is not a, a very nice process like you still need to go back to the, to the sublime modify the, the effect and everything and this is not this is not like a, something that you want to have like a graphic like a designer to do. Um, so uh, actually, there was something interesting uh, for the um, another feature that I had to add for this, uh, or that they managed to add in time for like for this demo was um, so we're zooming into the timeline. And we like for instance for this part. Let's put the music. Well, this is a little bit too big in resolution, so it's not very well sync. Um, but for this part, like, syncing that can be like kind of a pain, like having to move all those things. Uh, but you can, uh, with the audio API, you can reduce the playback rate. So, this is what this one. So you are, this is basically how you sync to this detail. Like you keep listening to the whole thing to a very slow uh, playback rate, and then you listen to this kind of, if, in, if the music wasn't darker now, it just sounds even more dark. Um, but uh, yeah, I managed to get this thing on, in, and, and it's kind of, kind of the basic of what I usually needed. Um, and now this, oh, I see. So four months later, since then, uh, I was invited here, and then I used this as an excuse to add like more improvements to this tool. And one of the things I like, the first thing I want to to do was like, for instance, in this case, 
like now when you click here, now you can finally like modify. Um, you can modify the text in it. Like you have some parameters of these things. So in this case, we can just change and put like you know. You can even change it even when, whenever it's playing if that's something you want to do for some reason. And uh, to do a little bit more like something interesting, we can also move the camera to say something cheesy. Too many other parameters at this point. Like here, we can change instead of being the flash being this kind of blue, like we can change it to be like whatever the color, and we already see how it's looking. And uh, that's what that was kind of the first thing. Then I um, all this stuff wasn't, it's not like very nice. Like for instance, in this scene, we set up, I don't know, you can see it, like we set up the X, Y set of the position that where the camera starts and the X, Y set of the position where the camera ends. And this is not like a very nice way of like animating things. So, so the next thing was implementing some sort of uh, curves into it. So you have like the camera position and then like on the previous tools that we saw, like uh, you'll have like an editor for the curves. Sadly, the editor for the curves is on, I still don't have it, but the curves internally it's, are working and I have it. Uh, actually, I think it was on this, on this, no, on the next one. Yeah, like in this one, uh, this color module has a, um, uh, it's just a fade in, uh, but this color module has a, um, uh, a curve applied to it internally. Let's see if I can get this to work. So you'll see that the value uh, it's uh, decreasing or like it's increased uh, decreasing actually because it just goes from like opaque, full opaque black to uh, to transparent. So you can apply any kind of curves internal, like linear curves, or spline curves, or any kind of even a sinus wave to any kind of frequency to any value that you have on the on the uh, on the engine or the tool. Uh, and here now, for instance, on this effect, now that you have, we have some parameters, we can also move. We can move the camera, for instance. Like if for whatever reason we we wanted to try, we wanted to see how it looks from here. Like I'm like. Yeah. Unless that's probably too close. And something from this one, you want to try something else. Um. So yeah, like uh, this curves thing is still a work in progress. I need to do like another panel, like uh, where the timeline is, uh, to be able to still try to do, need to def decide how the format is and how it they are, whether they're in sync with the block or whether they are like uh, using their own time or whatever. Uh, but this is kind of something like this is kind of the latest version, and this is how it's starting to work. Uh, for the module like this week, uh, for the module um, system. This week I started to, like I had something like really ugly before implemented. It was, everything was like in a global scope. Like you will define like, uh, like, like image module equals function and then everything, every other module knows the name of the other modules. So that was a little bit uh, ugly. And uh, um, this week I started doing a new, trying to define a new module uh, code for it, a module pattern. Uh, this is what I have so far, but I had the feeling that this is not the best thing, like probably something like uh, RequireJS or like AMD or something like that. I had to look how is the best way to implement all this stuff. But this this will be like a module, like this code is like what, what you will, 
what you then, like, it's just a JS file that you can drag into the tool and use that as a resource for anything. Like, it can be like a flash, or it can be like a 3D scene that has some parameters or whatever. So this is kind of the basic of it. Like, it's like a module has like par parameters, uh, an init function that is just whenever you need to create something or whenever it's like um, uh, you need to initialize any kind of um, create geometry, so things like this. Uh, the load still not is not implemented yet, uh, but it's it's part is supposed to be there. And the start is uh, whenever the effect of whenever the module is going to be rendered for the first time. This is being called, so so you can set up your effect. And then the update is just the method that is called like every frame that the module is rendering, and it's sending the parameters. So if it's like so if the animation is moving or like there is some sort of moving for like a uh, core animation or anything like this, like you get it from the parameters uh, on that method. So for instance, this is um, how a, a module looks for a, just a single um, um, flat color. Like in this case, I'm using three, but this, you can use whatever you want. Like it, it can be done like for any other, like any other library. It, like this is agnostic. It doesn't know, it doesn't know what 3GS is. So in this case, uh, for instance, we're, we're drawing this uh, flat color, and so, so in 3D, when you, what you want to do for like rendering color, just a plane, is creating an orthographic camera, which is always going to be like, this, it has no perspective. And then you create a plane, and then that plane has a color. So in this case, we're creating an orthographic camera, and then a scene, then a material. This doesn't select. Uh, a material, uh, which is the one that we're going to change the color on, and then create a plane geometry, uh, which is just the quad that we need to draw with uh, um, this create like a mesh with this geometry and this material at uh, the scene. This is kind of ugly. Like, and right now, the, this effect needs to know about the render where it is, but uh, the render is another module. So this is the dependency issue that I still need to work on. And um, then, all, with all this setup, then you have um, you define the module, and then you have the parameters that is like color. Which is type color, and then like this is the default value, and you can have specify some ranges, especially for like float, which is like a normal um, number with decimals. So for float will be like for like opacity, and uh, then in this case we don't have a, we don't need a start, or we don't need a init or anything, so because it's always going to be there. Uh, so this this one has a, a date method uh, that in every every time that is being called, every render time. Uh, it's going to set the, the color of that material to whatever the parameter color is. And that parameter color can change because we can, apply, we have any, we can have any curve applied to it. Uh, same thing with the, the opacity, it just sets the opacity and then it renders. So in this case, uh, we have like, we have like the web, WebGL render like kind of on, on top of it, which only does initialization. It doesn't really do anything on update. And then it has the scene that it renders that scene. And then uh, in this case, you need to flash something or you need to have like any flat color. That it is another render uh, with this scene, and this is more or less how it's looking so far. And so the next thing I want to work, which is kind of the obvious, sorry, uh, it's kind of the obvious thing. Like, yeah, this is pretty interesting and uh, really useful, especially for me because I know how to build this thing and how to where all the parts are. But uh, it would be nice if there was like uh, something on the editor that you go here, and then you can just publish. So publish basically means exporting or creating a zip file with the HTML file and everything that you need. So you can upload it to your website and then uh, publish it on your website. And uh, this is one, uh, it's, it's, not an, uh, as, as, it's not as easy as it sounds like, uh, but I'll, I'll try to work on it for the, like, as the next thing. Also for like, also the CJS editor needs something like this. Uh, but yeah, um, this is pretty much what I have so far. And, that's it. It's, uh, it's open source. It's on GitHub already. It's always been there. So if you want to, guys, if you, anyone want to take a look or um, contribute at some point, like, feel free. Thank you very much.